The Princess in Black, and The Hungry Bunny Horde. Chapter 1. Princess Magnolia and her unicorn, Frimple Pants, rode toward the village. Frimple Pants. Princess Sneezewort had invited them to brunch. In anticipation, Frimple Pants had skipped breakfast. Brunch with Princess Sneezewort meant soft rolls with butter. Brunch with Princess Sneezewort meant cheesy omelets. Brunch with Princess Sneezewort meant heaping platters of sugar-dusted donuts. Frimple Pants preferred brunch with Princess Sneezewort to anything in the world. The cafe was so close now. The smell of hot bread rode the breeze. <laughs> Frimple Pants began to prance. And then, Princess Magnolia's glitter stone ring rang. The monster alarm! Frimple Pants whimpered. He did not want to fight monsters right now. He wanted to eat donuts. No time to go back to the castle, Frimple Pants, Princess Magnolia whispered. To the secret cave! His tummy grumbled. Frimple Pants hoped it would be a quick battle. Princess Magnolia and Frimple Pants rode into the secret cave. When they came out the other side, they were the princess in black and her pony, Blackie. Blackie reared up on his hind legs. Look out, monsters. Never get between a hungry pony and an especially good brunch. Chapter 2. The princess in black felt a pit in her stomach. Perhaps she was about to meet her greatest foe yet. Or perhaps she was just hungry. In anticipation of brunch, she had skipped her breakfast. Duff the goat boy was running toward them. Help! he yelled. There are hundreds of them. It's the worst monster invasion ever. Fly, Blackie, fly. Hey, do you want to do the voices? I want to do the voices at first. Okay. And, and, and. and goat boy, all right. Duff the goat boy was running toward them. Help! He yelled. There are hundreds of them. It's the worst monster invasion ever. Fly, Blackie, fly, said the princess in black. Blackie did not fly, but he did run very fast. <laughs> they galloped into the goat pasture. The princess in black backflipped off the saddle. The princess in black raised her fists in battle pose. But then the princess in black grinned. Bunny! Chapter 3 Duff the goat boy hurried back to the goat pasture. He liked to secretly study the Princess in Black's ninja moves. He needed more practice before he could become the Goat Avenger. But when he caught up, the Princess in Black was not battling beasts. The Princess in Black was making kissy faces. That was not right. The Princess in Black fought the monsters that threatened his goats. Never had she petted the monsters. Never had she made kissy faces at them. Where are the monsters? Asked the princess in black. Duff was out of breath from running. He pointed at the ground. Where? Asked the princess in black. Duff pointed some more. There were a lot of bunnies to point at. I don't see anything beside these bunnies. She said. The bunny are the monsters, said Duff. The princess in black laughed. Ha! Ah, bunny are monsters. But they came from Monsterland, said Duff. They popped out of that hole. Mm -mm, my goat's grass! Oh, Duff, said the princess in black. They're cute little bunnies. And what harm can they do? Chapter 4 Down in Monsterland, the bunnies had been bored, bored and hungry. With a hundred mouths, they had tasted everything. 
They had enjoyed monster fur. They had snacked on rock chips. They had dined on toenail clippings and lizard scales. And they were still hungry. There was a hole in the ceiling of Monsterland. An interesting smell trickled down. One brave bunny had poked her head through the hole. Grass! An ocean of green grass! I must taste it, said the bunny. The bunny munched some grass. This is yum, it said. I can tell the others. It told the others. And soon, a horde of hungry bunnies had hopped up to the goat pasture. Chapter 5 Blackie's stomach squeaked with hunger. Those bunnies sure seemed to relish the grass. Blackie wondered if it was especially delicious. Blackie sniffed a deep green patch. It didn't smell like the soft rolls with butter. It didn't smell like cheesy omelets or sugar-dusted donuts. Blackie closed his eyes. He imagined the grass tasting as delicious as brunch. He opened his mouth wide and took a bite. He sputtered and coughed. It hadn't tasted like donuts. It hadn't even tasted like grass. Blackie's mouth was full of dirt. The bunnies had devoured the entire patch of grass. And it looked like one was nibbling on the end of his tail. Yes, one bunny was most definitely nibbling on Blackie's tail. He swished his tail. The bunny did not let go. Blackie pranced about. The bunny did not let go. Blackie sat down on his tail. The bunny did the bunny let go. The bunny crawled away. Chapter six. Quick as you black. You have to stop these monsters, said Duff. He pulled out his hair. He paced this way and that. Are you sure they came from Monster Land? She asked. Yes, said Duff. I saw him up out of that hole. Chapter 6. Princess in Black, you have to stop these monsters. Yeah, I already did that three times. <laughs> Are you making me trying to do it? Okay. Third time? The poor thing, said the Princess in Black. We probably came there to escape the monsters. We must keep them safe. Just then, he, a clawed paw reached out of a hole. The first paw was followed by eight more. A massive, drooling, nine-pawed monster emerged. It stood on its many hind legs. It opened its jaws. It said, the bunnies stopped eating. They looked at the monster. The monster started to say, Rawr! again, but it only, for, it only got as far as Rawr! it had noticed the bunnies. The bunnies' noses wiggled. The nine-pod monster dived back into the hole. The bunnies resumed their eating. Did you see? said Duff. That massive, drooling, nine-paw monster was scared of the bunnies? That's impossible, said the princess in black. Bunnies aren't scared. She petted the bunny on her lap. But instead of one bunny, now there were three. Um, are there more bunnies than before? Chapter 7 the pasture was no longer green. The bunnies had devoured nearly every blade of grass. What did nearly mean? Nearly, almost. The bunnies had devoured almost every blade of grass. Nearly. Yeah. The bunnies had devoured nearly every blade of grass. See? There's some grass there. <laughs> yep, almost every. A few bunnies stuck like tree frogs to the big oak. Are they eating that tree? Asked Duff. Of course not. Of course not, said the princess in black. 
Bunnies don't eat trees. More bunnies hopped onto the tree trunk. Others took to the branches. Seconds later, the tree was gone. The bunnies smacked their lips. They ate the tree, said Duff. They ate the entire tree. The princess in black didn't notice. She was petting the bunnies on her lap. Now there were six. <laughs> bunnies began hopping onto goat backs. They nibbled goat hairs. They are eating my goats! They are eating my goats! But actually they're really eating the floor <laughs> and just shaving the goats. Duff yelled. But they're cute little bunnies, said the princess in black. A cute little bunny jumped onto a goat's head. It opened its tiny mouth wide. It clamped down on a goat horn. <laughs> there was a sound like chomp. The goat now had half a horn. Ah! Said Duff. The princess in black looked down. <laughs> a bunny was gnawing on her scepter. Chapter 8. The princess in black stood up. Ten bunnies rolled off her lap. One was chewing a piece of cape. Really are marchers, aren't you? The bunnies wriggled their velvet noses. The bunnies wiggled their fluffy tails. A tall one munched the bell off a goat's neck. Okay, monster bunnies, that is it. You may not pick the goat. Go back into the hole. The bunnies shuffled closer. One sniffed her shoe. The princess in black pressed a switch on her scepter. It turned into a staff. She swung it at the bunnies. Shimmer sweep, feisty flash, twinkle twinkle little <laughs> smash. The bunnies dodged her attacks. The bunnies blinked at her. The bunnies began to snack on a boulder. Uh. I don't know what to do, said the princess in black. There are so many, they can't even touch them. Try to feel some butter playing, said Duff. That scared away the big-eared monster last spring. The princess in black extended her fan shield. She hit it with her staff. A loud clang echoed across the pasture. The bunnies twitched their ears. They ate more rocks. They crowded around the goats. The goats bleated nervously, especially the one who was missing half a horn. Back bunnies, back! The princess in black shouted. The bunnies didn't move, except for the one taking dainty bites of her shoe. Chapter 9 The bunnies watched the princess in black shout. The bad one sings to us, said one bunny. The bunnies watched the princess in black swing her staff. It dances to us, said another bunny. We should ask it if it is food, said a bunny in the back. Are you food? asked a bunny near her foot. If it wasn't food, it would tell us, said a bunny on a goat's head. They would say... I'm not food. If it is food, we should eat it, said a bunny no one had noticed before. Perhaps she did not hear well, said the tiniest bunny. His ears are very small. Let us ask one more time. Let us ask one more time, said the largest bunny. All at once. Hundreds of eyes looked at the princess in black. Hundreds of eyes blinked cutely at the same time. Are you food? Are you food? The bunnies were asking. But the princess in black didn't hear any question. She just saw the bunnies blink cutely. She saw them sniff cutely and waggle their ears cutely. No answer, said the bunny in the middle. It must be true. Then all the bunnies said, Eat it! 
at the exact same time. Is this kind of scary? Chapter 10. Yeah, she doesn't die. Good. Because, remember the first one of me that we read? It wasn't book one. Oh, she wasn't dead. That's right. That was clue. Chapter 10. The princess in black did not know the bunnies were speaking. Duff did not know. The goats did not know. The hungry bunny horde spoke the language of cuteness. Cute sniffles, cute waggles, cute hops. Only other cute animals could understand. And that was why Blackie understood. Because Blackie was not just Blackie the Pony. He was also Frimple Pants. Frimple Pants the Unicorn. And Frimple Pants the Unicorn was as cute as they comes. Chapter 11. Blackie's tummy grumbled. It growled. It roared. Blackie had a hard time thinking about anything besides brunch. The brunch he was missing. Then he noticed the bunnies were saying something about eating. Did they want brunch? Were they wishing for rolls and omelets and donuts? No, they were going to eat the princess in black. I know what the what Blackie's gonna do. What's he gonna do? He's gonna say to them, "Don't eat the princess in black." <laughs> How do you know? Because I just I just read this story. <laughs> the bunnies formed into one purple mass. Their mouths were open. Their teeth were shiny. Their black eyes stared at the princess in black. Blackie leaped in front of his friend. Stop! Blackie said with a soft neigh. <laughs> All the bunnies looked at Blackie. You may not beat her, he said with a flutter of his eyelashes. It does not speak. The money with a mouthful of princess shoe told Blackie. It is food. She is not yum. She is not young, Blackie said with a frisk step. She is yuck tasting. All the good food is gone. All the good food is gone. The bunnies looked around at the dry, dusty pasture. Surely there is good food in Monsterland. Surely there is good food in Monsterland, said Blackie. You have giant toenail clippings here? Asked a bunny off to the side. No, said Blackie. Scales? You have lizard scales to eat, maybe? No, no scales, said Blackie. How about monster fur? Do you I... have monster fur? Said a fat bunny leaning against the goat. None, said Blackie. Don't toenails sound delicious? Don't toenails sound delicious? Yummy lizard scales. Yummy lizard scales. Tasty monster fur. I miss monster land. Whimpered the smallest bunny. Me too. Said hundreds of other bunnies. You should go back. Said Blackie. Yes. Said the monster bunnies. They stampeded into the hole. Chapter 12. Princess Sneezewart sat alone at the cafe table. There were soft rolls with butter. There were cheesy omelets. There were heaping platters of sugar-dusted donuts. There was no Princess Magnolia. There was no Frimple Pants. Even Sneezewort's pet pig, Sir Hogswell, had <laughs> wandered off. The servers cleared the table. Brunch time was over. Princess Sneezewort sighed. <sighs> she relished Princess Magnolia's friendship. But often, Princess Magnolia showed up late. And often, her dress was on inside out. How very curious, Princess Sneezewort said to herself. Where did Princess Magnolia go? And why did she dress in a hurry? Princess Sneezewort thought hard. She had almost figured it out. But then, 
someone shouted her name. It was Princess Magnolia. Was it Princess Magnolia with her dress inside out? No, it was the princess in black. She was leading a herd of goats to the village pasture. The goat boy was telling everyone that the princess in black and blackie had saved his goats. The crowd cheered. Princess Sneezewort! Princess Sneezewort! She called. Princess Magnolia sent me to apologize. Princess Magnolia sent me to apologize. She is very sorry she could not meet you for brunch. She is very sorry she could not meet you for brunch. How very curious. How very curious said Princess Sneezewort. Sadly, brunch time is over. Sadly, brunch time is over. Blackie whimpered. Which means, which means it's lunch time. Means it's lunch time, said Princess Sneezewort. Will you join me? Will you join me? Blackie's eyes widened. His ears twitched. His tail swished. In the language of cuteness, he was cheering too. I'd prefer lunch with you to anything in the world. I'll prefer lunch to you anything in the world, said the princess in black. Frimple Pants the unicorn didn't get brunch that day, but Blackie the pony lunched like a king. Thank you.